What's up YouTube? This is Genesis 121 giving you guys my September update on the 140 gallon saltwater aquarium. So uh, as you can see got everything back up and going. Um, survived the ick outbreak. Um, not everyone made it but uh, we're back and moving. Um, let me see, as you can see, it's after the ick outbreak, uh, the ones, my survivors that I had was my uh, Yellow Tang, my Flame Angel, the uh, Blue Damsel, I had one Chromis, and my uh, Orange, the Snowflake Clownfish. Those were the ones that survived. I unfortunately, lost all the other ones. And the bad part about it was, it wasn't due to... Um, the fish actually have an ick it was just due to um, having a fully stocked tank inside a 10 gallon quarantine tank and it was just so much aggressiveness going on between them that they were fighting and the more aggressive fish survived and some of the ones that weren't as aggressive didn't make it so uh, that was a bad part about that so that was the bad news but um, as you can see have some good news um, I only had one chromis that survived after all of that ick outbreak and all that so uh, I went to my local fish store and was able to get four fully grown green chromis and um, I got those and they immediately went into quarantine tank along with a black and white oscillaris clownfish um, I had a regular Oscillaris clownfish before that was fully grown, lost it um, during this process. So uh, now I got two snowflakes, one black and white and one orange. Um, and as you can see, they're paired up as well. Um, so those are doing good. And a lot of the times my uh, green chromis, they like to come together. Uh, sometimes they'll venture out all over the tank individually. So that's what we have as far as fish additions for now. Now, the moment that a lot of people have been waiting for. You might have caught a glimpse of it already, but I've got some frags in my tank. Now, by no means does this mean that I'm trying to go into a coral reef. I just thought it'd be nice to have a few frags of some of my favorite uh, corals and just maybe get them ready. Uh, let them grow up uh, so later on when I set up my son's bio cube I'll have some nice colonies growing uh, I would say it all kind of started uh, I went to my local fish store Neptune's Reef where I was able to get these uh, green chromis and uh, she just was asking me she was like when are you going uh, going to a coral reef I'm like nah I don't want to do it I don't want to do it so what she wind up doing was she threw in this zoa right here into my bag and when I got home, I noticed it in there, this Zoa frag, and I couldn't believe it. It was a pretty funny moment. So she gave me a free Zoa frag and threw it in the bag. Um, it had a lot more heads on it. Um, if you recall, I had a chocolate chip sea star in my tank. And as soon as it saw that, it, it probably ate about four heads of that Zoa off of there, um, unfortunately. So I removed the chocolate chip sea star and took it back to the local fish store and used it for credit towards getting that frag right there which is a polyp and I don't know the exact names of all these just kinda know generally what they are but this one it's kinda like brown during the day but at night time it glows like a purplish red um, next frag I have there is a uh, Kenya tree um, it's a frag of a Kenya tree. I've got a metallic green candy cane that's got one head on it and probably soon will be sprouting a second one. And I have a metallic green hammer. I love this frag right here. Really hope it takes off and starts growing. And as you can see it made my little DIY frag rack. Just used a mag, uh, uh, magnetic cleaner that I had laying around and uh, some egg crate glued it on there and have me a frag rack so probably will get a couple more zoas to put on there and some of my other favorite corals just to put in here um, just see if the tank will 
uh, sustain them. So far they're doing good. They've been in here for almost a week now and everything seems to be going good. Now since adding these frags, um, which means I'm going to have to adjust my water, water parameters a little bit. Um, usually I was keeping my salinity lower around the 1.020 range. Um, before, as I told you guys before, I was maintaining my calcium and alkalinity levels, um, but they were pretty stable. Um, it wasn't really anything in here that was removing those uh, calcium and alkalinity. Um, but one thing I have been struggling with, uh, my pH keeps dropping. Um, it drops usually. I, I dose. I use this. Uh, this, this uh, reef buffer here by Seachem and I dose this uh, when I do my weekly maintenance on Saturdays and throughout the week it'll raise it to about 8.2 ish range and then eventually it'll start dropping and as you can tell here you look on my uh, reef keeper elite my pH is at 8.0 and then by the end of the week uh, it'll be down to the 7. Point 8 7.9 range and it'll just hover around the hovers around there until I add my next uh, dose of it um, one other thing I was doing I did some research and I was looking on some of the forums and just trying to find out some more information and found out um, people are saying that a lot of the times your magnesium uh, can play a role in why your uh, pH could be dropping so if your magnesium levels are low it could be causing your uh, pH to be dropping. Uh, so I went and got this Seachem Reef Advantage Magnesium and I added like two doses of that. Didn't want to add too much because I don't have a magnesium test kit to really monitor that. So um, see if that makes a difference on anything but like I said until I get a test kit not really going to mess with it too much. Um, I would have thought that me having uh, uh, Calcwasser and my auto top off would have been keeping my pH at high levels, but um, I'm not sure why it's not. Um, but yeah, any suggestions you guys may have on that or knowledge, uh, feel free to put them down in the comments section. Um, another thing I want to talk about uh, a couple months ago, I added this stuff called Reef Soup. I found it on eBay from uh, someone down, it was a guy down in uh, Florida. And it, when I got it in, it was full of copepods and amphipods, and I added this in. And since I did that, put some down in my refugium area and some up in the main display, and I had a really big explosion of amphipods and copepods all over the place, uh, as I showed you guys in one of my last previous videos. Um, another thing, uh, I did a test today, tested out my water parameters. Right now I'm sitting at 1.022 for my specific gravity. I plan on raising that up since I have the coral frags in there and raising that up to about 1.025 where I plan on maintaining that. Just going to slowly keep raising that up. Um, my DKH, when I tested that, it was at 8 and my calcium was at 400. I'll probably add some more calcium in just to get my levels up and try to maintain them around the 420 area. But other than that, everything else has been pretty stable. So while we're down here, I might as well show you everything else that's going on. Uh, take you over to the Sumperfugium. Um, right now the lights are off because I've been trying the reverse light cycle. Um, as I was telling you guys before, you can see my Chato is withering away to little or nothing. Um, the conclusion I came to that was my I don't have any nutrients right now. This tank is such a low nutrient level that um, it's just not being able to have a good food supply. So uh, every time I test my nitrates, they're undetectable. Um, the phosphate test kit that I use doesn't go down. It's it, it's undetectable. So. I may need to get a, another phosphate test kit that goes down into like super low range to see if it's anything there. Um, one thing I did over here with my uh, maxi jets, uh, inside my carbon reactor I was getting the little pre-sponge that's down here was getting caught with a lot of 
dirt and stuff like that before it was time for me to change out the carbon. That was causing me some issues. So what I wind up doing was putting these pre-filters on. And I put two on there, one for the uh, carbon reactor and the other one back there is for my uh, UV sterilizer. Just so no craziness is getting up inside there. Protein skimmer's been doing great. Uh, as you can see there, got some really dark, nasty skimmate coming through there. Um, uh, that's about a week's worth of skimmate. I know it's not a lot, but uh, as you can tell by the color, it's it's pulling some stuff out. Not the best protein skimmer, but it's doing its job. I also made a little modification to it. I put a squeegee in there and glued that in. And what that does for me is it allows me to clean the inside of the skimmer neck. Uh, without having to pull the whole skimmer cup off and clean it. Uh, so that just makes the skimming more efficient for me. Uh, saw that idea originally on one of my fellow YouTubers, JD Reef. Uh, big shout out to him. Uh, he's finally getting everything going with this tank, so I'm looking forward to his updates. Alrighty, so that's what's going on down there. Okay, so um, I was talking to another a uh, YouTuber, uh, Hawaii Five-O, and he was ordering a lot of livestock and stuff like that from Blue Zoo Aquatics. Um, so I was talking to him back and forth, and he's kind of had some hit or miss um, as far as the quality of the stuff he's been getting. So um, I noticed they had some very good prices on fish, and they also had... Uh, free shipping on any order over 140 so that led me to place an order with them so be on the lookout for that I should be getting a uh, fish order which would complete fully stock this tank for me so I will be doing an unboxing on that this will be my first time ordering from online um, never ordered livestock online so we'll see how that goes but definitely we'll be doing an update on that um, and I have the quarantine tank already ready. Did a water change on it, cleaned it all out nice. And um, for the fish, uh, they'll I have dividers in here and also little sections in there to separate some of the more aggressive fish from some of the other ones that aren't as aggressive. So uh, everything makes it through quarantine, which they will all be getting treated with cupramine the whole time. Uh, it'll probably be a, about a month quarantine process that I'll have on those fish. Um, and then they will be added into the main display, which will conclude, which will fully stock my tank. And it shouldn't be any more fish being added after that. Uh, uh, be on the lookout. I should be able to put more videos out now. Um, I finally graduated the school after two months. So have a lot more time on my hands now to be able to uh, put some updates out there for you but uh, thank you guys for watching if you haven't already hit that subscribe button hit that like button and uh, thank you for watching into our truth feed us first we feed us until we lead us earth and shock search for the footprint of my adidas to my waves i'm soaked all through the devil catches flow in the living water and start throwing all rules it might catch me but won't definitely and the allowance is only to test me i'm defiant to modern science if it's not compliant to my esv all i'm listening for is the voice of the many rivers make a mental note of what he spoke i'm taking plenty pictures you need scripture give me scripture keep the just give me scripture, hold it back till he delivers, then bring it back and tell me how he did it. Huh?